Actually, if I may. Go ahead. I'm unfamiliar with this, but I've been told certain things about it, and I have my unprepared notes. Okay. Okay. Um, being unfamiliar with the format, I'm going to have to adjust to this bit of awkwardness. But <laughs> um, okay. Uh, hello. We appreciate being invited this evening. Uh, the opportunity to represent ourselves as Erica Johnson, my partner Chris Hodges, uh, community members, as Across the Way Productions, a local business entity, and as Floyd Fest annual music festival, recent headline hog. Um, it's refreshingly, it's refreshing simply to be in the same room, having this real-time, fact-based discourse that we hope will put any continuation of media or personal speculation to rest. Um, for the record, we were on our annual family vacation when the board held its first meeting where Floyd Fest was a topic of conversation. So we actually did not receive the details of your interest in us until after the fact. I would like to thank you for your persistence in terms of continuing the dialogue and for deferring your conclusions uh, and any subsequent if printed version of them in the Floyd Press until this evening when we all have the opportunity to speak in person and in some cases even meet one another for the first time handily. Your picture was in the recent version of the press, so I have my cheat sheet. So I feel like I know you. Um, I've never been to one of these. I'm not entirely up to speed on the format of the proceedings. I have been, I did call an RSVP, and I have been told that we have a small uh, allotted allotment of time and that I am allowed to state, correct me if I'm wrong, that it would be our preference that this be a non-interactive portion of the agenda and that any Q&A be deferred until the end of our time allotment. Is that true? Yeah, we're Thank very you. informal at this point. It's just okay. more conversation, Thank you for dialogue to traffic out what's best. Okay. So I do believe I've collected all the relevant questions and points of confusion or contention from their various sources. I have the letter you sent, I have the newspaper articles, I have my cheat sheet, um, and I will try to be succinct in addressing them one by one. So to begin with, in order of the chronology, uh, with regards to recent media attention, on July 30th I met for an interview with Doug Thompson regarding some speculative remarks that had been made. Uh, about recent changes to Floyd Fest parking. These may or may not have sparked all this initial controversy, but I would like to reiterate the facts surrounding the 2013 changes to Floyd Fest parking. Uh, the decision to move from the Floyd County-based Chateau Morissette parking lot was not ours. Uh, changes in Chateau Morissette management led to a termination of our existing lease agreement, despite our two-month lobby to keep the precise existing arrangement, which was donations to local charities in exchange for assistance with the parking effort intact. Moreover, the decision to retire from the oversight and coordination of the volunteer parking effort was Sheriff Shannon Zeman and Chief Investigator Jeff Dalton's own decision. We don't blame them a bit for that decision. It was a thankless job, uh, and we did lobby for them and any charitable groups that they could rally to continue to find new avenues of involvement with Bloodfest. When we could not engage local nonprofit labor in a timely way, we hired it out. Our exact words in the attempted negotiation as they appear in the on-the-record email exchange were reprinted in the Floyd Press. Anyone from this room or beyond with further issue or question regarding Floyd Press parking changes should take it up with George Weldon or Chateau Morissette generally. Personally, we have no issue whatsoever with the move and are very happy with the arrangements with local landowners in the Helms Road vicinity where we are now. So I'm simply setting the record straight. I do want to be clear in reiterating and communicating the point that the past monies donated to charities have been, the monies donated to charities as they have been referenced by this group in the context of parking, were generated in large part from the fact that members of these organizations provided labor to the Floyd Fest parking effort using paid labor, as we were forced to do this year, significantly impacted our ability to generate revenue above and beyond the costs associated with parking. Taking the weather into consideration, we took a significant overall financial hit on Floyd Fest parking. Nonetheless, and to continue the chronological countering of allegations, Floyd Fest has always made, of its own accord, and outside of the parking effort even, charitable contributions to the local communities of both Floyd and Patrick. And here I would like to state for the record that we personally, as Across the Way Productions, draw very little distinction between the two counties and feel that it is our prerogative to do so. 
well before any of this debate or dialogue, over this past single season, Floydfest has pledged, given, or through its nonprofit partnerships generated, and I'll speed through this, 1,600 to local fire and rescue squads, 2,000 to the Lady Buffs, 2,500 to the Floyd County Band Boosters, 3,000 to the Jacksonville Center, 3,000 to Friends of the Parkway, 3,000 total to individual persons in need for emergency medical care, $4,500 to Safety Rope, 4,000 to the local Chamber of Commerce. That was a recent one because we hosted the Chamber Social and did not realize that they had a deficit. 4,000 to local landowners and offset carbon donations supporting responsible forest stewardship, 4,000 to the Song Project, 5,000 to the Artisan's Trail, 6,000 to sustain Floyd, and block ticket donations to organizations for their personal fundraising resale of over $12,500 for a grand total of $54,600 with another 17,000 still slated for giveaway within the local community by nonprofit partners, totaling $71,600 in annual giving completely outside of any suggested mandate from this group. Let the record state, in all due respect, that we decline on no other reason but principle to show proof of these donations, all of which are documented on our tax records, because we believe as private citizens operating a private company that it's not within the legal purview of this group to make that request. If we are in error on this count, and if it be shown that there is both rationale and precedent for it, we're happy to and can easily prefer receipts for these payments, a point which you may take up with Jim Short, present tonight as our legal counsel, as well as probably just an interested bystander. I don't know if he's on our tab tonight or not, but he's there. You can talk tax with him. <laughs> um, I do think that speaks to all the issues raised in the August 2nd issue of the Floyd Press. Here we have attempted to clear up misinformation regarding Floyd Fest's changed parking logistics and address the issue of charitable donations that used to accompany the use of the Floyd County lot, making clear the facts and that, parking completely aside, Floyd Fest is, has been, and continues to be an organization actively supporting local charities and nonprofits. So, moving on to August 15th, and the Floyd County supervisors raise questions about Floyd Fest article. To sum up the line of questioning from the last Board of Supervisors meeting as it was reported on and appears in print in the pages of Doug's blog, Blue Ridge Muse, I swore not to go there and I went there, <laughs> um, with the question attributed to Supervisor Klinger, are they a Floyd County business? Technically all we have on file is that they are a Montgomery County business and that they put on a show in Patrick County and call it Floyd Fest. It may be my own sensitivities here that are causing this question to sound like an accusation of some sort, because in my own investigations, I can find no legal issue with any county business in Floyd or elsewhere being owned or operated by persons outside of that county. Actually, by a magnification of that implied theory, there shouldn't be a Texas Roadhouse in Christiansburg, or even a Patagonia in California. But there are, and I'm glad for it personally, and I've never heard of it being a problem for those respective counties or states. In direct response to the question, however, no, we do not live in Floyd County. We live in Montgomery, a stone's throw from this sign, and always have. I went to Auburn High School. And yes, the Floyd Fest event is on a piece of land that is partially in Patrick. I'm not sure people know this. It's in both counties, partially in Patrick with a small portion existing in Floyd County. And yes, we put on a show and we call it Floyd Fest. And we do consider ourselves a Floyd County business. <coughs> By its implied definition of a business reflective of and generating revenue within the Floyd area. So if there is a specific accusation, allegation, even implication for this line of questioning, we don't know what it is and need additional clarity. While we do largely operate from home offices in Montgomery County, we have maintained a satellite office here in downtown Floyd since spring of last year. And we do appreciate the reminder that we technically should have had a Floyd business license, which we have since acquired. Uh, at this point, any tax assessment on our business equipment, which is very minimal, we have a rented copier and we all work from personally owned smartphones and iPads, but that is likely due Floyd. Most of Floyd Fest value, beyond ticket sales, of which Virginia is one of a large number of states that do not levy taxes on entertainment, is in real estate and the site property improvements. Uh, these taxes are paid by our landlord, Tom Pickett, to Patrick County. Mr. Klinger, you go on to say in the same article that the county needs to see some accounting from Floyd Fest on what revenue is actually produced for the county, and add that you see little evidence 
at Floyd Fest, which Doug refers to as the nationally known event that bears Floyd's name, has anything to do directly with its namesake. <clears throat> In terms of the requested proof of what tax revenue the county has received directly from Floyd Fest, our honest response would be very little. When we had some RV parking at the Chateau Morissette lot, we paid the required transient occupancy tax, which we do continue to pay to Patrick County for RV and car camping sites. We've covered the issue of property taxes, which we pay in Montgomery where we live, real estate taxes, which our landlord pays, and as well determined that there are no taxes owed on tickets. One question I would pose, not to be answered immediately, is there something more that we're responsible for that we aren't aware of? If so, we're happy to look at that. We certainly pay our fair share of state and federal taxes. If we had anything more directly to do with the tax law, we'd certainly try to funnel more of it to the county. That being said, we feel like we're doing our part, and that we do, by broader definition, well deserve to be included in the board's notion of a Floyd-based business. Indeed, a perusing of some of the town and county related materials as part of my um, self-taught crash course on business license taxes, manufacturer levies, online ticketing taxes, and what in the world else might we have overlooked. Uh, I did come across the 20 town, 2012 Town of Floyd Comprehensive Plan. And I would like to summarize our position by referencing the proposed strategy from that very plan found on page 47. On the part of the town to, and this is verbatim, encourage and support local entrepreneurship and enterprises by encouraging responsible businesses and industries that enhance the local economy. We would moreover suggest that the very fact that Floyd is indeed, as Doug brought up, nationally known seems counterintuitive, particularly for a group so well attuned to such things, to questioning whether it is revenue producing for the county. While we're somewhat uncomfortable tooting our own horn, we would draw your attention to the fact that we were voted the best event in Southwest Virginia last year by Virginia Tourism. And as well, Chris and myself nominated as top 20 under 40 entrepreneurs in the region. So our overall position here is that the revenue Floyd sees as a county, as a result of Floyd Fest, is inherent and the result of the economic impact generated by the operations of our company within the Floyd area, and the overall economic impact generated by visitors to the area during the event. But again, facts speak louder than speculation or generalities, certainly foreign tooting, so I did put together some facts, some hard numbers. Floyd Fest employs six year-round Floyd County residents and pays nearly a quarter million dollars annually in wages and health and dental benefits. ATWP employs and pays another $210,000 annually to Floyd-based part-time and contract labor during its events, including those it operates in other parts of Virginia. This season alone, ATWP paid $140,000 in labor to local contractors for road improvements, electrical upgrades, and miscellaneous construction. All of this before Floyd Fest's 15,000 patrons land here for four to five days. So does Floyd Fest have an economic impact? Nearly eight years ago, we worked with a group of statistics students and faculty at Radford University to conduct an economic impact survey, which came back at over a million dollars then. And even before all of this, but certainly now in light of it, we had planned to work this coming year with a tech-based group for an updated study, which we are happy to share with the board and the town at large. Just this summer season alone, I would mention, working late nights down at our building there, feeding our A-team, we, as a small group, spent $500 this season on food at Oddfellas Cantina, $600 at Pizza Inn, $1,050 on snacks and drinks at Food Lion, $1,200 at Subway, $1,600 at Wiki G's, and a whopping $1,650 at our friendly neighborhood Blackwater Loft, trying to stay awake and on our game. There can surely be no doubts in the mind of anyone, anywhere within the region and certainly within the small confines of this room that Floyd Fest has a significant economic impact on the town, county, and overall community of Floyd. For heaven's sakes, in a couple hours, in one day of rain, we paid hard cash, $12,000 worth, to local farmers and complimentary tofies on behalf of our patrons, which nobody does, by the way. <coughs> which is a nice segue into the discussion surrounding the article, Fest Issues Supervisors Raise More Questions. 
So do correct me momentarily if I'm wrong, but I think we can make short shift of this one in that the overall response from the public, including journalists, advisory accountants, questions levied at the Attorney General, have laid to rest any notions of ex post facto parking fees do anyone, as well as the notion of mandatory donations, which I think is a topic we already outlined our position on. Frankly, we can only surmise that such unprecedented suggestions were put forth in a temporary moment of personal pike, perhaps some projection of issues between the Board of Supervisors and the school board onto Floyd Fest. We don't really have a dog in that fight, nor anything more to add to what's recently been said on the subject, except that we appreciate the school board bringing to light the timely payment and $9,000 profit made after all was said and done. We do apologize retrospectively for any toes that were inadvertently stepped on in that process. That was not our intent. We would, moving forward, request that in terms of our ongoing emergency planning, which we will hopefully not have to implement for some time to come, that we be able to use in the future the same parking facilities in the event of something that meets an agreed upon criteria of an emergency situation. We would request a formal response to this question by January 1, 2014, so we can responsibly reformulate our contingency plan well in advance of next year's event. And moreover, although it feels like a bit of a long shot at this point, um, we would like to apprise the board of the many Floyd Fest attendees that found the experience of parking in the town of Floyd a boon, an enhancement to their overall experience, and leave the door open to future pre-planned, group-sanctioned fundraising partnerships certainly of a nature that would only improve the certainty and increase the amount of a very localized economic impact. Drilling down, thank you for bearing with me, I would posit that perhaps the more fundamental underlying question posed in one of the articles mentioned here by one of the members of the board, what directly does Floyd Fest have to do with its namesake, is one in which the answer might vary depending on the individual or entity to whom it's being addressed. If I, in my co-founding capacity, were asked, I would say that Floyd Fest is a ref reflection and celebration of music and arts culture, local, regional, national, international, and as well a celebration of the kind of goodwill exemplified by the school board, the bus drivers themselves, and those in support of the decision to allow county buses to aid visiting patrons. If you ask a random sampling of said patrons, you might find responses such as those that appear as well on Doug's blog or on our Facebook page in the Roanoke Times, that Floyd Fest is a great event in an amazing corner of the world, full of happy, helpful people. Basically, verbatim, we had a great time at your festival, Floyd. Mud happens. <laughs> 